The Book of True Life, Teachings of the Divine Master, Teaching 313. I come to deliver strength to your understanding so that it can store everything that I spill in these moments with you. This is the time of great trials and great lessons. Your spirit knows it, and that is why it comes before my manifestation. Eager for my revelations and my words, understand that only with great preparation can you really take advantage of those tests. Never like now has the spirit of humanity contemplated such a vast field for its development, and already he is ready to enter it in search of the truth that he has lost and cannot find. If I left men alone in their search, they would be lost. But in truth, I tell you that if, when in searching, finds only his doom, I have not abandoned him. How can you conceive that I left him when he goes after the truth? That's why I come to you at this time, bringing you a message full of revelations which will soon be the lighthouse and the way for the spirit of humanity. First, I have come to this people that is forming around my divine manifestation. And tomorrow, when he is strong and capable of teaching, through him, I will reach other nations. Understand the responsibility that these words hold for you and let your whole being feel the sweet weight of his cross. You people are the missionary who in this third era would trace paths to the spirit of your brothers, paths of truth that lead the spirit to light and peace. You are the one who will establish spiritual ties between men so that the peoples come to harmonize and unite. Today, despite being under the influence of my word, you sleep a peaceful sleep because you have not realized the significance of this time or the magnitude of the charges you are receiving. But you don't always go to sleep. The whirlwinds come already to shake the foliage of these trees under whose shade you have heard the divine nightingale chirping. And when you see how the branches shake and the trunk creaks, when you see how the leaves, fruits, and nests fall, then you will realize that you were sleeping because you did not want to listen to the voice that from infinity was warning you. He spoke tirelessly so that you would live alert and never be surprised by pain. Wouldn't it be better for you to wake up now with the echo of my voice than tomorrow with the roar of the storm? Soon you will stop listening to my word. And if you do not take it into account as a true disciple of my doctrine, tomorrow you will have to cry. But you cannot say that I did not speak to you about dangers or threats because then you will remember with great clarity how at the time of my communication, I took the understanding of all my spokesmen to tell you at every step, watch and pray, because the fight will be great and you need to be strong. I will leave a prepared path, a path full of light for the spirit. I will fulfill as master for you and later each one of those who have spiritually sat at my table at this time to eat the bread of my word. They will be responsible for each of the missions that have been entrusted to them for their spiritual journey. I will leave a prepared path, a path full of light for the spirit. 
I will fulfill as master for you. And later, each one of those who have spiritually sat at my table at this time to eat the bread of my word. They will be responsible for each of the missions that have been entrusted to them for their spiritual journey. What would be the answer that you would like to give me at the moment of asking you for the fruit of your struggle? Of course, you wish in these moments that at that time your answer is good. Because I tell you, from now on, do something so that your spirit may gather on the road the worthy fruit that will make it wait serenely for that moment. Truly I tell you, your spirit will inevitably have to go through that instance. Why then neglect this, thinking that it is until after this life that your spirit will give its harvest to the Father. I give you time to meditate and to fulfill the mission that your spirit has come to earth to fulfill in this time. See that I treat you as a just and loving teacher who puts at your disposal all the means for you to achieve peace and all that you must conquer. Just as there are those who would never want to leave this earth, there are also those who dream of getting away forever from her. I tell each other that it is largely up to you that this wish is fulfilled. If the one who longs to return to the spiritual valley ends her mission on earth, she will rise to those abodes and will not have to return to this world anymore. On the other hand, the one who feels great attachment to the material, if he knows how to take advantage of life in the good of his spirit, sowing good for others, he will be allowed to return as many times as necessary with rejoicing of his spirit. But, if he who wishes to get away from human life and yearns for spiritual life has not fulfilled his mission and he who would like to always inhabit the earth does not know how to take advantage of the opportunities that life offers them, they would not be able to see their wishes. The first will have to return to the world and return to the spiritual valley to return again to earth without ceasing until he fulfills his mission and reaps the fruit that he has often rejected. The second will have to be retained in the spiritual world until identified with his consciousness. He forms in himself the firm purpose of fulfilling on earth the mission that was always left unrealized. Do not think that I reproach you if in your heart you showed me love for your life in the world. If your desire is noble and if you want existence to honor my name, I will have nothing to claim from you. But if you're rooted in the world due to insane ambitions or low passions, then I'll be the first to tell you that you are not worthy to inhabit this world that I have filled with blessings for the advancement of your spirit. Love me, live in my law, harmonize with everything and everyone, and the place where you live will be indifferent because what will be worth most will be your spiritual elevation. You do not know how notorious it is for the spirit to rise in the midst of its human condition, overcoming all the temptations of the world. To reach those merits, I allowed your spirit to incarnate and made it inhabit material worlds wisely prepared by me. Each world, each dwelling place was created so that in it, the spirit evolved and took a step towards its creator and thus advancing more and more on the path of perfection, having the opportunity to reach their white, clean, and modeled at the end of his journey, at the peak 
of the spiritual perfection that is precisely to dwell in the kingdom of God. To whom does it seem impossible to come to dwell in the bosom of God? Ah, oh, poor minds, you don't know to reflect. Have you already forgotten that you sprang from my bosom? That is, that you have already lived in it before? Nothing strange. She will have everything that sprang from the source of life to it return in due time. Every spirit sprouting from me was a virgin, but later on in its way many were stained. However, being all planned wisely, lovingly and justly by your father, I went ahead to put on the path that children would have to go through all the necessary means for their salvation and regeneration. If that spiritual virginity was desecrated by many beings, there will come a day when purifying all its faults acquired their original purity, and this purification will be very notorious before my gaze, because it will have been achieved by the Spirit through great and unceasing trials of his faith, his love, his fidelity, and his patience. You will all return through the path of work, struggle, and pain to the kingdom of light, from which you will no longer need to reincarnate in a human body or live in a world of matter, because by your spiritual reach will already allow you to make your influence felt and send your light from one world to another. Why do you hold back your spirit by denying its advancement and delaying with it his entry into the kingdom of light, where everything great exists that a spirit can aspire to? Work without ceasing, even a little each day, always thinking of reaching the abode that truly corresponds to your spirit to that mansion that I sometimes call the promised land, where you do not cry or suffer or die. Towards that state of elevation and light, this doctrine leads the spirit, which is a path, is a beacon, is a traveling staff of support. Blessed is anyone who rises on the wings of thought when he hears this word. Because he, when he returns from his ecstasy to the daily struggle, he will carry a light burning inside him that will make him advance step by step, bringing it closer each day to that eternal mansion from which you all sprang and to which you will all return. I am going to speak in these moments to all the disciples who would give their lives rather than disobey my mandates. Let my word reach the most sensitive fibers of your heart, because in this word you will support each other many times and in future times. If you really keep my essence, you will not be one of those who regret the departure of my spiritual manifestation, since you knew how to store my revelations and teachings. Neither mourning, nor sadness, nor be discontent, nor will confusion be in you, because you will see everything fulfilled according to my promises. And for an instant, you will not pretend to rebel or interpose yourself in the fulfillment of my will. From today, have the full knowledge that everyone who firmly takes the step towards spirituality you will soon see the prize. You will feel my presence before and within you. You will enjoy my inspiration and progress in all your spiritual gifts. It won't just be the belief that I am close to you, but the reality of my presence before your spirit. Those who think that after 1950, they will fall into stagnation or lose spirituality or wrong because it will be precisely 
after the departure of my word that some of you began to give true steps of advancement and understanding in my doctrine. If you believe that during the time of my communication you have reached great heights of spirituality and that has been the cause that my word flourished in the mind and lips of the spokespersons, you are in error. Because I tell you with all truth that until now you have not taken a firm step toward spirituality, that it is the goal set by my loving word to all my children. It is necessary that the spokesperson disappear, that you stop hearing my humanized thoughts on the lips of these creatures, that you renounce all rituals and all symbolism, so that you can find the essence of spiritualism. I say this to each other, to those who long for the progress of their spirit and the flourishing of my doctrine in this time, and also to the conservatives of traditions, routines, and customs who believe that practicing their material worship are complying with the law. Yes, people, you well know that within a pure, simple, and essentially spiritual doctrine such as the one that I have come to reveal, you have once again created an external worship, which, in the course of time, you have arrived to believe that he who constitutes my work but the time has come when I speak to you with absolute clarity because you are strong to know this truth. Along with the wheat of my word, the nettle and the tares of your mistakes also grew. But hear one of my parables given in the second era, the one that taught to let grass and wheat grow together, not try to mow the grass before the wheat had matured because there was a danger of cutting the good seed. Thus shall it be done at this time, blessed people. The hour is set for the sickle of my justice to descend to reap the fields in which my seed was sown, so that at last the truth and the essence of my work of all human influence. May you rejoice in the contemplation of my light and come to truly possess the knowledge of this divine revelation. The hour is also marked when the same sickle descends to each religion to reap its fill in order to separate the truth from everything that is false and impure. All human existence has evolved. Its science, its way of thinking and living, its knowledge, its conquests, and their ambitions. He has only neglected his spiritual part. He has only left the spirit in abandonment without wanting to take charge of all the rights that the spirit has within life. And that is why for many centuries humanity has lived spiritually stagnant. How little do men give to their spirit through their religious worship? How thirsty, how hungry, and what great need for light has the spirit of humanity? There is very little wheat that has grown and there is a lot of weeds, but I am going to help everyone to mow the fields with the implacable sickle of truth which you will finally see shine in your world. People who come to listen to the lessons of the last year of my communication between you, let them be recorded in the most subtle, in the most sensitive of your understanding and of your heart, so that the light of consciousness that shines in the highest of your being can act in each one of you. The trace that I will leave you will be one of peace, so that when you no longer hear this word, you will have to bear witness to it and say, 
the Master passed by, leaving us the way prepared with his divine light. My footprint will be engraved in the depths of your heart where the inner sanctuary is. It is necessary that my word be recorded in your mind so that you study it deeply. Only in this way your faith and your strength will be true. You are going to contemplate how many will not believe in the departure of my word. But in truth I tell you that in that you will know they also did not believe in my presence while I have manifested in this form. Those who have been fluctuating between doubt and belief, although they may have appeared to have absolute faith in my manifestation, will be precisely those to deny that my word has ceased, because those who have truly believed in what I have revealed and ordered, they will not be able to deny one of my words. Those who today have doubted and have not had full faith as the faith of the disciples toward the Master should be, those will remain parked in their path, feeding only the monotonous and routine right of their own making. Instead, those who now have believed me, they will necessarily have to continue believing in me even after the manifestation of my word. They will be obedient to my commands and will do their best to fairly interpret my teachings. They will have an ideal, that of spirituality, and they will have a light that will always accompany them, faith. My gaze will be aware of the work of this people once the stage of my communication has passed to reward every disciple obedient giving him my charity encouraging him to continue on his journey always inspiring in him new steps of spiritual advancement i know that among this people there are those who not only believe in my word but also consider it fair and judge perfect that the father put an end to his communication in this way, so that they fight for spirituality. These hearts are certain that there will be no loneliness or emptiness in them, and that my presence, because in that way you will approach a new form of communication with my divinity. One more stage, pure and perfect, which will be the communication from spirit to spirit. The time is not far off when your brothers will come to you, questioning you about my revelation, demanding your testimony about the proofs that my truth has given you, and how different will be the way in which some and others testify about my work. While some adhere strictly to the truth of what they heard, others they will have to find arguments to justify their confusion. It is necessary that I speak to you in this way, beloved people, so that in time you will reflect and enter into a thorough examination of your works, thoughts, feelings, words, and purposes, letting your consciousness preside over that manifestation and that exam. This moment is necessary for you to fully open your eyes to the truth because this way you will be able to rectify if you have erred and you can make up for lost time. Great will have to be the satisfaction of those who lead my doctrine to triumph and make it known in all its purity and truth. And I, as a master who loves you very much, I want that great joy to be experienced by all my disciples. Hear me, people. For you I have stored in my sanctuary many wonders to reward your spirituality. But I will wait until you have all joined as brothers, until you are all obeying my commands to overflow on your spirit 
and on your matter the torrent of light, charity, constellation, and revelation that I reserve for the days of your spirituality. This word cannot have greater clarity transmitted through all my spokesmen. Once understood by all, my justice will be pending to contemplate those who rise up in pursuit of greater spirituality, as well as to judge the works of those who still seek his kingdom in this world. Who made man from the beginning look for a guidance for your actions? Who made him search deep within his being for his immortal essence? The Spirit. He was the one who has been revealing to him that a higher nature encouraged and enlightened him. Man, through his gift of intuition and revelation and through his intelligence, although slowly, since the most remote times of its existence, it has sought its origins, its essence, the cause of its being, the reason for its preeminence in the world and the purpose for which it was created. Since he realized that in him there were powers that differentiated him from other creatures, he was having the idea that a higher destiny was reserved for him among all beings of creation and slowly the intuition of a God, the existence of the spirit and therefore he need to raise a worship or spiritual tribute to the one from whom it felt to come. Hence the spiritual evolution of humanity, evolution that has not been the same in all men because these divided into races and distanced by nationalities, customs, and languages, some have advanced more than others. Some have had a way of raising their worship to God and others have adopted different ways. On all men I have shed my light, revealing to them the only existing truth. But now you see how each man and each people feels, thinks, believes, and interprets in a different way. These different ways of thinking of men have originated their divisions since each people or race follow different paths and nurture different ideals. Most have strayed from the true and luminous path, believing that fulfilling the divine law implies sacrifices, renunciations, and superhuman efforts preferring to create for themselves religions and sects whose compliance and practices are easier for them to carry out, believing that they calm the need of light and elevation that they feel in their spirit. Many centuries and many ages have passed without men realizing that it is not a sacrifice compliance with my law and that, on the other hand, they do sacrifice flesh and spirit in the world by shunning my commandments. They have not realized, they have not wanted to understand that who keeps my word has to find true happiness, peace, wisdom, and greatness that are so differently conceived by materialized men. The moral and scientific world that surrounds you has been the work of men of material ideals, of men who have only sought the material improvement of humanity, and I have allowed them to do their work, to carry it to their limit, know its result, and reap its fruit, so that in it they can gather the light of experience. In that light will manifest my justice, and in that justice my law, which is love, will be present. When men recognize their errors and rise up in pursuit of the true path, it will be because they have awakened, because they have repented, because they have enlightened, 
and then their works will have not only the human purpose, but also spiritual. Each people, religion, set, science, or man carries within itself its part of falsehoods and errors, as well as its part in deed. But the moment will come when the need to unite as a powerful and irresistible force come closer to contribute each one his seed in a desire to harmonize all. For this, there will have to be struggles, disputes, and confusion. But it will be necessary for everyone to reach the only conclusion, which is the immutable truth of my existence and of my law. At the end of the struggle, men already at peace with themselves and with their companions will understand that to reach the goal of knowing and experiencing true peace, it is essential to live in communion with divine law that precisely comes from the love of the Creator. At the same time, they will understand that it is not necessary to profess so many different religions to be able to preserve in good and morality, but rather to achieve true harmony among all and have a moral that is beyond the simply human. It is enough to carry in your heart the word that you call the doctrine of Christ and that to embrace it, you will have to live it and love it with simplicity and humility. The light of the revelation that I have sent you at this time, I have translated into a humble and simple word through my interpreters or spokesperson so that all humanity knows it and help it in its awakening. Now that everyone is looking to material means and solutions to save oneself from the chaos into which the world is sinking, now that nobody tries to be inspired spiritually to find in me the answers to your questions and the solutions to your problems. My word will reach the palaces and humble houses, knocking at the doors of hearts, making people shudder to the spirits, healing and comforting the sick of body or spirit, and illuminating minds in darkness. Blessed are those who receive it serenely, those who listen to it and meditate on its meaning, because it will be a seed fertile in their hearts. My peace be with you.